about the quantum mechanical model of the atom. But before we can talk about uh, the atom, we have to understand something about the properties of light uh, and its nature. And we're going to start by talking about uh, the nature of light and its wave-like nature. And light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. In fact, we can think of visible light as one form, and we'll talk more about what visible light uh, and its characteristics are. But uh, it is a form of electromagnetic radiation, and electromagnetic radiation is a wave traveling to the right of the page here. And uh, each wave has an electric field and a magnetic field component, and those two components are uh, each perpendicular to the direction of travel, uh, and each perpendicular to themselves as well. And uh, another way of thinking of it is that the electric field and the magnetic field are in uh, what are called perpendicular planes, or also called orthogonal planes as well. And to get an idea of how that works, it's a little bit hard to understand and picture for me. So we can think of a uh, light wave or a wave of electromagnetic uh, radiation is traveling towards uh, you, or towards the camera in this case. And uh, in, so here's the direction of travel towards it, and then uh, going up and down perpendicular to that in a plane perpendicular or orthogonal is the electric field wave. And then going in uh, perpendicular to that and both the electric field and the direction of travel is the magnetic field wave. And uh, one th way to understand the electromagnetic wave um, is uh, we're going to keep it simple. And after uh, right now, when we draw the wave, we're just going to draw one of those components. And typically it's considered to be the electric field component, although there uh, you can see that uh, we can think of either one depending upon uh, what's important to us and uh, what we're talking about. But it's a traveling wave, and the electric field is uh, perpendicular or orthogonal to the direction of travel. Now, another important thing about this, and uh, this is going to be number two, is that um, uh, one single wave of electromagnetic radiation is called a photon. One single wave of electromagnetic magnetic radiation is called a photon. Okay. And um, a single photon is the smallest form of electromagnetic radiation. So a single photon or a single wave, a single photon is the smallest form of electromagnetic radiation. And, and so before I write electromagnetic again, uh, I'm going to come up with an abbreviation for it, capital E, capital M. So a single photon is the uh, smallest form of electromagnetic radiation. And that's hard to imagine sometimes because in a typical light bulb, it will be emitting, oh, approximately 10 to the 20th photons, even though it's only a uh, 10, 20, 50 watt light bulb. So photons are very small, and uh, yet uh, they do only come uh, one at a time or two or three or four uh, or 10 to the 20 of them, a whole bunch of them together. But, uh, okay. Now, uh, all electromagnetic radiation moves through space at the same constant speed, the speed of light. I like to think of the speed of light, so the term, so since all electromagnetic radiation, and we'll talk about the different types in a few minutes, um, travels at this, I think another way of referring to it is as the speed of electromagnetic radiation. Okay. 
and uh, the speed is designated by the lowercase letter C. And we will uh, keep track of it to three significant figures and we will call it 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, and uh, this is very different than sound. So sound travels at a very different speed. Sound travels um, by uh, causing the particles of in the air to vibrate. Um, and while as electromagnetic radiation, the photons uh, travels regardless of whether or not there's any particles in the air. In fact, uh, the speed of electromagnetic radiation, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, that is actually the speed in a vacuum. And a vacuum uh, is, uh, if you remember from our gases chapter, uh, has no particles. And uh, the air is sufficiently, has sufficiently few particles spaced far enough apart, again from our chapter on gases, that the speed of light is very close to this. And so we'll use this number uh, even for air when we do calculations. Now, uh, the speed, uh, sound is different. The speed of sound is approximately 340 meters per second. And uh, that gives rise to uh, what happens when there's lightning. So the lightning, whenever it occurs, uh, is occurring at the same place as the thunder. And the, we see the lightning much faster than we hear the thunder. And if the lightning is one kilometer away, then the sound of the thunder is heard approximately three seconds later. So that's one kilometer and then three seconds later. So uh, if you want to know how far away the lightning is, uh, that's a good rule of thumb. Now let's talk more about uh, what a photon is and photon light wave characteristics. So a uh, the main thing that will characterize a photon in this course is going to be wavelength. And wavelength has the symbol lowercase Greek letter lambda. And uh, the lambda symbol, uh, I will draw it in a second here. Uh, here. So I draw it up, down, and then there with straight lines. There are lots of different ways to do it. And uh, as long as I can tell what it looks like, uh, that's fine. It's the lowercase Greek letter lambda. And it's the difference from uh, peak to peak, in this case, crest to crest. And uh, we could also consider it to be from uh, the bottom to the bottom or trough to trough. So this will also be the wavelength. And uh, that's because a wave has no up or down. In fact, it has no positive or negative so if we were to turn this wave upside down, we would have the same wave with the same wavelength. It's convenient sometimes to refer to a peak or trough, uh, but there is no uh, external or no uh, necessarily defined frame of reference unless we choose to define one. Um, so, and uh, the wavelength is gonna be, if you know the wavelength, you're going to know a lot about the um, characteristics of the wave. The wavelength, it will turn out, is related to the frequency, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now let's talk about uh, the symbol for frequency. The symbol for frequency is going to be the lowercase Greek letter nu, which I draw as a horizontal line, a, a vertical line, and then a swooping uh, line there. And so it's a lot, sort of like a funny V or a V with a hat on the back of it. Uh, again, however you draw it, I think the main thing is that we also have V for velocity that we sometimes use and V for volume. And if there's any time where you think that those uh, could be used in the same problem, make sure you're clear about the symbol for frequency. Frequency definition is the number of wavelengths that pass a point in a given period of time. And uh, frequency, I, let me give some examples 
that are non-chemistry related in frequency, or at least non-quantum um, uh, mechanics uh, model of the atom related. So uh, you could uh, go to the grocery store once per week, and that is a frequency. Uh, you could go, uh, or I see my mother uh, once per month, and what you start to see is that uh, a frequency is something that happens per time period. And that's gonna be exactly what we're doing when we're talking about waves. So uh, in a given period of time, so the units of frequency, uh, the base units are going to be uh, one, uh, per second or one per second. Um, and we'll see one over seconds as the units for frequency. We'll also see seconds to the minus one is the units where uh, these two are equivalent and uh, a one over second or a per second race is equal to a second of the minus one and is also equal to something called a hertz and so you'll see that um, quite often um, when you're talking about things like cell phones and um, and uh, different frequencies and what's nice about Hertz is it doesn't have anything to the negative one or in the denominator, but uh, we will translate Hertz into our base set of units, second, one over seconds or seconds to the minus one. A little bit more about frequency, because I remember that frequency was a, a difficult concept for me to think about. So, and let's see if this helps. So, and to do that, I'm gonna draw two waves. I'm going to draw one with a longer wavelength, where longer wavelength, where I'm using the symbol there. And it doesn't matter how long it is, I'm gonna try and make it as symmetrical as possible. And as uh, reproducible as possible, let's see. So if I look peak to peak and trough to trough. So in this, I've got one, two, two and a half wavelengths. And again, the exact number doesn't matter. But now I'm gonna draw one with a shorter wavelength. And again, it doesn't matter just as long as it's shorter. And relatively, and there we go. And this time we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's call it, uh, goodness, well, it's six, and uh, one, oh, this is actually half, this is a little more than two and a half. So let's say approximately two and a half and approximately six wavelengths, and we'll leave the details uh, just to know that this is a shorter wavelength. And let's say, that uh, since these are both electromagnetic waves, they're both traveling at the same speed. Both waves travel at the same speed. And we can then further imagine that these are the distances that these waves travel in uh, one second. So we're gonna put distance traveled in one second. Okay. And so uh, we can then think about how many of these waves would go by a given point uh, in a given amount of time, and the time would be one second, and this would be something like si um, six waves per second. And this top one would be approximately, and I'll put the approximately in here, approximately 2.5 waves per second. And what we can see is that uh, six per seconds, if you have a shorter wavelength, you have a higher frequency because six per seconds is greater than 2.5 waves per second. So this has a greater 
frequency. And uh, that's the, the, the uh, relationship that we're trying to uh, derive here is first off, uh, if you have a shorter wavelength, you have a greater frequency. And then, of course, we won't derive this, but there is an equation that relates these two. And we'll start by saying if one is shorter or smaller while the other one is greater, that's going to be an inverse relationship. And we've seen inverse relationships before, uh, pressure and volume in the ideal gas law, molarity and volume in the uh, dilution formula, for example. And what we found is that in order for an inverse relationship to hold, the two uh, things that are inversely related uh, tend to show up as multiplied times each other. And then that's what we're gonna see here. And the equation is actually going to be C, the speed of light, which I'll write in a second, is equal to wavelength times frequency. So two things that are inversely proportional to each other or inversely related, one goes up while the other goes down, uh, tends to be related um, by multiplying them. And C, lowercase c, is the speed of light. Or also what I like to call it the speed of all electromagnetic radiation. All right, so that's the relationship. Now, uh, we'll work an example or two. It says the longest wavelength of red light is wavelength equals 750 nanometers. What is its frequency? Uh, and so to do that, I'm gonna write our equation that we just had. And we need to know its frequency, so I am gonna actually rearrange this uh, by dividing each side by wavelength to end up with, uh, let's put it down here. Uh, frequency equals uh, C over lambda. I know that my speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And now I have 750 nanometers. Uh, my units here for length are gonna be meters, so I'm gonna have to do a conversion. So I'm gonna take 750 uh, nanometers and uh, we ask you to memorize uh, although this is also on your nomenclature list the conversion factor for this we says that we said that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the minus 9 meters and if we multiply that out we get 750 times and then remember the way we enter 10 to the minus nine is we enter it as one exponential minus nine. And we get, and uh, this number fits on my calculator. Let's see if I can, yes, I can put it in scientific notation. And I get 7.5, I'm gonna keep a zero for a third sig fig, 7.50 times 10 to the minus seven, and those are meters. So that's what's gonna go in my denominator. Uh, and then now I do the uh, division, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth, exponent eight, divided by 7.5 exponent nine minus, and I get uh, four times Huh. Let me, I, I apologize there. This says minus seven up here, so this should say minus seven, not minus nine, so I apologize. And then let's recheck my math. Three exponent eight divided by 7.5 exponent seven minus 4.00 times 10 to the plus 14, but we don't have to write it. I just say plus because it's such a big number. Looking at our units, we get our meters to cancel out and we're left with one over seconds. And that's what we expect for a frequency. And what that number says 
is that 4.00 times 10 to the 14 waves with a wavelength of 750 nanometers go by any single point in one second. So if we imagine red light going by any one point, there would be that many waves going by per second. So it's an extremely large number of waves, and each wave is very, very tiny and moving very, very fast. Now, um, let's do one more example. And this is gonna say for the 5G cell phone network, one cell phone carrier uses a frequency of 39 gigahertz. What is the wavelength of this electromagnetic radiation? Uh, and here we are given something uh, in gigahertz. And again, from your nomenclature list of uh, prefixes to memorize, we know that giga equals 10 to the ninth or times 10 to the ninth. So this is going to be 39 times 10 to the ninth hertz. And we said that uh, hertz meant one over seconds. And that's gonna be important because we're going to need seconds or one over seconds in this case to solve for the wavelength. Now, um, let's see here. We're asked for wavelength. We have a frequency. We're going back to our same equation. And the way it appears on your conversion equation sheet is in the version that I tend to start out with. C equals wavelength times frequency. Then from there, we're looking for wavelength this time. Solving for wavelength. See if I'm still on screen, yep. This time it's speed of light over frequency. We get 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second over, uh, and we could use this as 39 times 10 to the ninth. You could also move the decimal point over one place and make the exponent 10. Either way is fine as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I will use this version over here now that I have it. 3.9 times 10 to the 10, one over seconds. We can see that we have seconds in the denominator of our numerator. We have seconds in the denominator of our denominator, so those units do cancel out, leaving us with, leaving us with meters, and then we can do our math. And for this particular one, three uh, times 10 to the eighth, divided by 3.9 times 10 to the 10th. And I get, well, I'm gonna go back to regular numbers, 0 0.00769 meters. Two, three significant figures, which uh, you could go to two because of this number, but we typically go to three sig figs in lecture here, uh, meters. And we can convert that into something that has a nicer number by moving the decimal point over three places and we get 7.69 millimeters. And that is the wavelength of at least one type of 5G cell phone network signal.